it might seem incomprehensible how a mother could not love her child. While mothers can exhibit strictness, especially in the realm of child rearing, there's typically an innate drive to nurture and protect their offspring from harm. Nevertheless, even this instinctive mechanism occasionally falters, leading parents to extremes from neglect to overbearing involvement, from excessive discipline to undue leniency. However, the situation I am about to recount stands out significantly among tales of bad moms, as Teresa Knorr's actions towards her children were genuinely horrifying, surpassing the bounds of what is considered normal. The Beginning of Life Teresa Knorr, born on March 14, 1946, in Sacramento, the capital of California, had parents named Swanee Gay, who worked in a pencil factory, and James Cross, a cheesemaker on a dairy farm. In the late 1950s, the family faced adversity when the head of the household was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, leading to job loss and a subsequent descent into depression. Teresa, the youngest of the children, shared a strong bond with her mother. Therefore, when Swanee unexpectedly passed away from a heart attack in 1961, the girl was profoundly affected. The response from James to his wife's death was peculiar. Without clear justification, he started blaming his 14-year-old daughter, Teresa. Despite bringing another woman into the household in late 1961, their relationship did not improve. In fact, the stepmother also harbored animosity towards the girl, exacerbating Teresa's already challenging life. Free Sailing Frustrated by her father's critical comments and stepmother's constant complaints, Teresa decided to leave home at the age of 15. She sought refuge with a friend whose parents sympathized with her situation and treated her kindly. In the summer of 1962, at the age of 16, Teresa encountered her future husband, 20-year-old Clifford Sanders, and they married in the fall. Just 10 months later, in July 1963, they welcomed their son, Howard Clyde. However, their marital bliss was short-lived as Teresa grew suspicious of Clifford's fidelity. She discovered women's clothing in his car and a photo of a nude girl in his wallet, bearing the inscription, Beloved. Their marriage was far from perfect. The End of the First Marriage the youthful couple frequently engaged in arguments, sometimes escalating into physical altercations. In June 1964, the disputes reached a point where the young mother ended up in the hospital. Although advised to file a police report, Teresa chose not to press charges against her husband. A month later, another quarrel erupted. This time, the catalyst was Clifford's decision to celebrate their son's first birthday at a bar with friends, returning home only in the morning. Amidst the heated argument, according to Teresa, her husband attacked her with his fists, but she had a shotgun within reach. A gunshot echoed and Clifford collapsed. He was pronounced dead. Self-defense or murder? Teresa faced arrest and a murder charge in connection with her husband's death. However, she adamantly refused to plead guilty, asserting that she acted in self-defense against her allegedly abusive and alcoholic spouse. During the trial, numerous acquaintances of the deceased attested that Clifford was not known for alcohol abuse and was not prone to violence. Even Teresa's sister gave testimony against her. Despite the conflicting accounts, the jury acquitted Teresa. The decision may have been influenced by the fact that she was pregnant with her second child, fathered by Clifford at the time of the trial. American Legion In March 1965, Nor welcomed her second child, a daughter named Sheila Gay Sanders. Following this, 
Teresa underwent an unexpected transformation, engaging in excessive drinking. Frequently, she frequented a military bar, the American Legion, where she crossed paths with Estelle Thornsbury, a military veteran. Despite the age disparity, they quickly formed a connection, initiating a relationship. However, suspicions arose within a couple of months when Estelle noticed Teresa leaving her children with him while she spent nights away from home. Thornsbury confronted Teresa about infidelity suspicions, leading to a revelation that she was dating his best friend, Robert Knorr. Consequently, he evicted her. Teresa then moved on to her new lover, and in July 1966, the couple married. Their union resulted in the birth of a daughter, Susan Marlene Knorr, in September of the same year. Large Family Robert had a deep affection for children and insisted that Teresa expand their family with the addition of a son, or even two. Teresa readily agreed, and in 1967, they welcomed their first son, William Robert Knorr. The following year, in 1968, Teresa became pregnant again, giving birth to their second son, Robert Wallace Knorr Jr. The couple seemed unable to curb their growing family, as Teresa gave birth to their sixth child in 1970, a daughter named Teresa Marie Knorr, honoring her mother. However, Teresa and Robert's marriage had already begun to show signs of strain. Quarrels and mutual accusations of infidelity became commonplace between the passionate and hot-tempered spouses, leading to constant conflict. Marriages and Divorces Frustrated with his wife's incessant accusations, Robert decided to leave her in December 1970. In response, Teresa vowed that he would never see his children again, a promise she largely kept as he remained estranged from his children for many years. Six months later, Teresa entered into a new marriage with Ronald Pulliam, a railroad worker. However, after a few months of cohabitation, he became disenchanted with her, observing her tendency to drink excessively and wander off into the night. They divorced in 1972. Teresa embarked on yet another marriage, this time with journalist Chester Harris. However, this union proved to be the briefest of all, lasting only from August to November 1976. The cause for the divorce was infidelity on the part of her spouse. Hate. Amidst the turmoil in Teresa's personal life, her six children found themselves left to navigate their existence independently, a situation that would prove to be a respite from what lay ahead. Regrettably, none of the Nor children escaped their mother's relentless physical, verbal, and psychological abuse. Teresa harbored a particular disdain for her daughters, Susan and Sheila, a sentiment fueled by jealousy and envy as the girls blossomed into young women contrasting with Teresa's fear of aging and losing her perceived beauty. By 1976, at the age of 30, Teresa's body had borne the toll of six childbirths and an unhealthy lifestyle, resulting in weight gain and a fading beauty. Blaming Susan for alleged spells she believed were cast upon her, Teresa decided to make her daughters as full-figured as herself, asserting, you can't be prettier than me. As a form of punishment, she forced her daughters to overeat, preparing large pots of cheese pasta. If the children resisted, she resorted to physical intimidation. Teresa's obsession escalated, leading her to handcuff Susan to the bed or table, driven by the irrational fear that her daughter would cast further spells. In a desperate attempt to escape the abuse, Susan eventually ran away and reported the horrific conditions to the police, detailing the physical and emotional torment her siblings endured. However, when social services intervened and contacted Teresa, she dismissed her daughter's claims as lies, 
asserting that Susan suffered from mental health issues requiring treatment. The credibility of Susan's account hung in the balance as social services had to decide whom to believe. Accidental shooting. The girl returned home and Teresa, infuriated by what she perceived as disobedience and betrayal, intensified her punishment. In 1983, amid another altercation with her daughter, Noor, unable to locate handcuffs, resorted to retrieving her 22 caliber handgun. She handed the weapon to her daughter, Terry, instructing her to keep an eye on her sister. As Teresa rummaged through the kitchen in search of handcuffs, a dropped pot startled Terry with a loud noise, causing her to accidentally harm her sister. Shockingly, Nor neglected to take Susan to the hospital, but miraculously, the girl survived and eventually recovered. In 1984, 18-year-old Susan mustered the courage to express her desire to leave home. Nor agreed under the condition that her daughter allow her to remove the bullet to prevent it from serving as evidence if Susan reported the incident to the police. We need to cleanse her of evil. Susan reluctantly agreed to the makeshift surgery performed right on the kitchen floor. Unfortunately, an infection set in, leading to Susan falling seriously ill and eventually slipping into a coma. Convincing her other children that Susan's illness was the result of demonic possession, Nor declared that the only way to cleanse her body of demons was through fire. Teresa enlisted Robert Jr. and William to assist in the gruesome act. They transported Susan to a remote mountainous area of the Sierra Nevada, following Nor's chilling instructions and carried out the brutal murder of their sister. Sheila. Following Susan's murder, Teresa directed her intensified punishments toward Sheila. Struggling with financial constraints and being unemployed, Nor coerced 20-year-old Sheila into soliciting men on the streets for money, as reported by Terry. The caring mother even facilitated her daughter's initial connections with clients. Initially pleased with the additional income, Teresa later accused Sheila of contracting a bad disease and becoming pregnant. In response, she locked her daughter in a closet, forbidding the other children from providing Sheila with food. Tragically, Sheila succumbed to her ordeal and died two weeks later. Teresa disposed of Sheila's body on the outskirts of town. Upon returning home, she ominously told Terry, you're next on my list. Fortunately, she did not carry out her threat. Attempts to get justice. The identification of the bodies of the two girls took a considerable amount of time, and with Susan and Sheila having no friends to report their disappearance, no one was actively searching for them. This unfortunate circumstance was, in part, due to their mother, who prevented the children from socializing with others. Teresa went to the extent of forbidding her children from attending school, resulting in none of her sons and daughters completing more than eight grades. Terry later disclosed that her mother compelled her to set fire to the family apartment in Sacramento, presumably in an attempt to eliminate any evidence linking Nor to Sheila's death. Terry managed to escape her dire circumstances in 1985 at the age of 15, effectively saving her own life. In the subsequent years, Teresa's youngest daughter made several attempts to inform authorities about the horrors she witnessed, only to be dismissed, with officials labeling her accounts as fiction and advising her to cease slandering her mother. Court and Prison Teresa Knorr, along with Robert Jr. and William, managed to evade arrest until 1993, when Terry reached out to the creators of the documentary America's Most Wanted, in the hope that the truth would finally be exposed. 
The documentary team assisted Terry in contacting detectives in Placer County, where the bodies of the girls were discovered. Recognizing the gravity of Terry's account, the investigators initiated a new inquiry, connecting the murders that transpired in 1984 and 1985. On November 15, 1993, Teresa Knorr faced charges of two murders and additional crimes. Initially pleading not guilty, Teresa changed her stance upon learning that Robert Jr. had struck a deal with the investigation, agreeing to testify against her in exchange for a lighter sentence. Robert Jr. admitted guilt to being an accessory after the fact and received a three-year prison sentence. William was sentenced to probation and mandated to undergo psychiatric treatment. Interestingly, Nor only agreed to plead guilty under one condition that she would not face the death penalty. Consequently, on October 17, 1995, she received two life sentences with the possibility of parole in 2024. As for Terry, following her escape, she settled in Utah and secured a job at a grocery store. She married twice and had two children. Unfortunately, she passed away in 2011 at the age of 41. I hope you liked this story. Please don't forget to leave a comment sharing with your thoughts below. Give a thumbs up this video and remember to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more captivating stories. Thank you for joining us on this remarkable journey and we'll see you in the next video.